catch his word, we're selling it. So he sailed off on some. Hey everybody, Bryce Larson here. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to um, talk through my thoughts on the barrel brake test. Um, this is somewhat a response to Gordon's response to our test. Um, I just want to kind of sum up some things. I'm going to agree with nearly everything he said. I have a few more, um, a few little bits and pieces. There's some number stuff I want to go through that is additional and then um, kind of move on from there. Um, okay, you can look at the barrel brake test. I'll put the link up um, with this video. The data sheet is the same one I'm looking at. If you crunch a few of these numbers, Regardless of barrel size, there's a barrel break approximately every 420 to 500 shots. Okay, That's consistent throughout. Now, I know that our number of samples isn't right. Gordon said the same thing. I'm going to agree with him. If you, wanted to, if you wanted to do real statistical analysis, a great number to work with is 20. 20 samples, 20 events, how, whatever you want to say that way. In our case, we would have had to keep shooting until we had 20 barrel break events, just barrel breaks, not chops. And then we could have done some real statistical crunching on these things. The problem is, of course, that with the 679, the total number of barrel breaks was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5. Four times as many shots. Uh, let me see what that is. That's a lot. 4 times 2964. We're not going to shoot that through each barrel. Like Gordon says, this is probably the best test we're going to be able to do on this. My thought is, is that if you haven't seen results that you can actually apply statistical analysis on after 10,000 shots, you may never see a difference between them. It may be related to paint or other things that you can't control with your barrel. My thought is, is that if you can't see a difference or you can't see a statistically significant difference in um, 10,000 shots, for my uses at least, I'm underboring as much as I can from now on. I'm going to shoot the 679, 682 out of every gun I shoot. We, ha we have shown proof that underboring is helpful. We have not shown proof now that um, overboring is helpful. That's, that's my thought process on it. Um, very, I don't know, I hope, I hope it's helpful to you guys. I would love to, and somebody responded to Gardens with a text comment, Gardens video, um, that they're going to go out and underbore and tell us what happens. Please do that. Shoot it for a day. Try to be open-minded. Try not to try to make any major claims about it. You know, if, if you come back and say, I think I had slightly more breaks than I would with an overbore, cool. That's, that's a legitimate result. You think you did. You may not have data to back that up, but it's useful information to us because, quite honestly, I play pump. This is one of my semis. It's an old spider clone. This shoots probably, I don't know, two, three balls a second, right? This is one of the guns I played with for years. I haven't played with it for a long time. Um, and then I played with the home, my pump. The 10,000 paintballs that we shot in this test is way more than I've shot all summer. Um, I buy a bag when I go play, and then I usually bring some home. Um, so for me, I would really appreciate some input from people who do go out and shoot a case, case and a half in a couple hours play. Somebody who goes out and shoots 500 balls, 700 balls, 1,000 balls in a game. I never do that. Um, and so for me, input from somebody who does that would be great. Because quite honestly, I just don't have experience dumping paint at uh, 13 or 15 balls a second. Never do it. And I, in all likelihood, won't do it for a significant amount of time or ever. So if you guys are going to go out and play, take some extra paint, go to the chrono station, chew through it. Shoot a, shoot, shoot a bag. Load your hopper. Or let's just say that. Load a hopper. Pack a hopper full. Shoot it as fast as you can. Set it on ramp. Set your gun on ramping. Semi-auto if you're fast with your um, with the, walking it. Um, and shoot that bag and post up and tell us how many breaks you have. Is it one? Is it two? Is it five? If you want to be really scientific and do what we did, when you see a break, stop shooting. Take your barrel off. Take your hopper off. Look in the neck. If there's paint all over the bolt, write that down. That's a chop, not a barrel break. Mike's got has a good video on this. If there's uh, paint splattered up in your hopper, that's a chop. That's not a barrel break. So um, give us an answer on how many barrel breaks, how many chops you get out of, say, a hopper. Ten people do this, suddenly we've got an extra 2,500 balls or 1,000 balls if you guys are willing to shoot enough through it. Um, and those people can then help us uh, advance this, this question about whether there is a difference or not. Um, I'm curious about how often people get breaks. I don't know if what we got was a lot or not. Um, I tend to think it's not. It's, it's asking a paintball gun. I mean, you're shooting a, a you know a gel cap pill. 15 balls a second is a lot of paint. It's a lot of stuff moving down the barrel. It's a very fast cycle speed. Um, 
so yeah, let us know what let us know what your results are. That'll be really cool to find out. So thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Slept through the scene until the engine stopped. Some suburban shopping mall. Sat away on such separate trips, and she got bent down at the party pit. Sat away on such separate trips, and she got bent down at the party pit. And I came back to start a band, of course. I saw her walking through the crystal court. She made a scene by the revolving doors She's gonna walk around and drink some more and So we walked across that grain belt bridge Into bright new Minneapolis She said I'm thinking of